One of the most expensive line item costs in housing is land. And the challenge that we have here is to find unencumbered land to build 200 affordable homes in Santa Monica, California. We want to build affordable homes in the airspace above freeways. The cost of building the bridge and the podium is equivalent to the cost of purchasing land. We are creating land out of thin air. My name is Charlie Perla, and I'm principal of DMS Perla, which stands for Design Management Studio. I'm a registered architect. I've been practicing here in, in McLean for about 30 some odd years. I do the design intent documents, very sophisticated space plan, the program requirements, and then I go out and hire the architects, mechanical, electrical, all the, the rest of the team to do the project. One of the most expensive line item costs in housing is land. And the challenge that we have here is to find unencumbered land to build 200 affordable homes in Santa Monica, California. There are lots for sale, but nothing like a four acre lot that could accommodate 200 homes. And on the other side of the fence in the public realm, there is public land, but uh, first of all, it may be out from where you wanna be. Stuff is occupied by agencies that have their own goals and, and, and intents on how they want to use the land. In order to get the land, you have to go through all these steps. It takes about four years going through the processes that require you to start the construction. And we need affordable housing now. So what's the solution? Build affordable homes in the airspace above freeways. Santa Monica Freeway comes into play because in this particular area of the Santa Monica Freeway is lower in grade than the residential communities around so that as you can see the 14th there's an existing 14th Street Bridge and an 11th Street Bridge that cross over currently the freeway beneath so the idea here is to build a bridge that connects the two bridges and then on top of that bridge do a podium and then build 200 affordable homes. Bridge to bridge is about 1,200 linear feet. And from side to side, the freeways, six lane highways, about 150 feet. So we're looking at about 150,000 square feet, 180,000 square feet, depending on how we connect to the bridges. Every bridge width you create is sort of the standard parcel size in LA, like a 50 by 150 foot parcel. Well, it's possible to build as many as 50,000 homes without ever buying a piece of land. It's not free because we still have to pay for the bridge. LA sure has a lot of freeways. You know, just in, just in LA, there's basically 54,000 new standard sized, 50 foot wide, 150 foot deep, parcels just waiting to be developed. There are other people that have been doing this. The Los Angeles Museum of Art uh, is building over Wilshire Boulevard habitable space. Historically, Ponte Vecchio in Florence, residential over the river, in those days the river was the highway. In Minneapolis, they're talking about reconnecting uh, these, these neighborhoods via park but also multifamily housing, office space, retail space, Dallas, Texas, a park over the freeway. Leave it to the Italians. They have to have their little espresso when they need it, an espresso bar over the Autobahn. We can get into more of the nitty gritty stuff over here. You can see the Santa Monica freeway and the plan. You drive uh, on, on grade, basically, into the parking lot where you have 400 parking spaces, you have retail, and then above the retail, you have the residential. You can see the Santa Monica Freeway in the plan. At Euclid and 12th Street, you could come in, get in the elevator, and go up to the retail space from Euclid into the retail area in yellow, and go across to the other side of Euclid or 12th Street, just walk right across. It's four hundred parking spaces. We have about 35,000 square feet of retail space, mixes of residential, one bedroom, two bedroom and studios on the roof level and roof deck with a lot of planting, a lot of communal spaces. The span is really 75 feet to the mid span and then another 75 feet for a total of 150 feet. And it spans 
Yeah, so it's basically like building a foundation elevated to the equivalent of the already standard freeway height clearance. Uh, Correct. This is no longer a bridge. This is a building. It yeah. happens to be a horizontal building, but it's, it's, you know, it's a building. I guess the one unique thing yeah. is maybe if you're doing your standard parking podium for a multifamily structure, the spans between columns are some, something less than 75 feet here, right? That's oh, sort of oh unique, yeah, yeah. Like engineering right. that has to be done is that like, this is more like a bridge than a uh, first floor podium style uh, concrete like structure because the spans between columns are much, much wider than typical parking garages. Bingo. Yeah. And then you can see it in the section. It's called the bridge, the bridge. So that's the 75 foot span. And that's where the, the, the podium would rest. The podium, however, is a 20 by 20 uh, foot grid with an eight inch slab above it. So once you have your podium up on the 20 by 20 grid with a two hour fire separation, you can build almost anything above that. This is already engineered like a bridge where it's like, it's, it, it's literally like a mini earthquake every, uh, you know, the, the rumbling <laughs> of a freeway right. is sort of like yes. already constant vibrations. So mm -hmm. um, this is already built to like sort of the highest standard of seismic rating you could possibly build, right? Right. We have spread footings, have the potential of being able to almost float on the, a liquefied earth. It has to be at the highest level of earthquake design. How is it any different, I guess, than like a skyscraper being built in Today. a liquefaction zone? Like, is it sort of yeah. the same, same, same sort same, of engineering? Same thing. The retail space of the podium is also a floating slab that's isolated from the vibrations of the bridge below it. And then when I get up to the level above, that is also isolated uh, with literally spring isolators Each little circle is one of those uh turbines and what's happening is that the air is get pushed to each side because mm -hmm. we have a, a obviously the bridge and as it pushes to each side then it activates the turbines which in turn mitigates some of the noise the, the air spaces are not only creating new housing developments literally out of thin air but it's also cleaning up and quieting down the freeway in yeah. that stretch that is being built. So right. it's adding more housing affordability, um, sort of environmental upgrade to the neighborhood and quieting it down, sort of, I guess, almost uh, erasing the negative impacts of being built next to a freeway in, in the first place. A clean, quiet area. <laughs> You're like flipping the script. To have this little bridge become almost like an environmental island. You have power, you have water, you're generating power, you're using solar, and you're uh, releasing oxygen into the atmosphere. Let's go into the cost analysis. First started with how much would it cost to build the bridge and the podium? But just, just the bridge and the podium. Speaking to a general contractor who's done this before, they came up with somewhere um, around 600 to $650 a square foot. Nearby in Yuba City in California, this was done recently completed. Their bridge is not as wide as ours, but it's longer, costs about $415 a square foot. This bridge did not have a podium, but I am pretty sure that it has all of the earthquake strategies required to build the bridge in California today. Compare those costs to actually trying to buy land. There isn't 150,000 square foot available anywhere at any price. But just for the sake of argument, let's say we did, could buy land. If you just take all those lots for sale, and it costs about close to $800 a square foot to buy land. The cost of building the bridge and the podium is equivalent to the cost of purchasing land. We are creating land out of thin air. Right now, in sort of supply constrained markets, this is an immediate opportunity to get a starting point for new housing construction at like you know $150 a square foot less than the market. And it's a public, publicly owned resource. We already have an organization that owns a ton of land at a cost basis 
at a discount to the market. We don't have to go through a whole bunch of little agencies to to assemble the land. The land is already there. What I love about it is it's it's using the freeway to fill in the gap, uh, like literally and figuratively, of what is needed in that community because you have this uh, this 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 whole stretch of land just sort of cutting right through the middle of all of our cities. Yeah. Exactly. And there's a lot of it. This is yet another version of this like horizontal density that LA is known for, that corridor density. Right, exactly. Turning the freeway or the expressway into the same space as like a new main street, almost. Like the amount of retail you have here, like this walkable, yeah. it's like you're turning the least walkable stretch of land in the city, the area around the freeway, into like sort of the most coveted like sort of retail corridor um, so with yep. plenty of parking <laughs> we're stitching back the neighborhoods a little bit by having the retail at the same level as the residential so you know you can go and get your fresh vegetables your fruits your you know a little supermarket perhaps maybe some artist studios so what we want to do is start the conversation the use of airspace above freeways in la maybe even railways in america well the implementation i think that's got to start from the public sector and say yes we're willing to consider using the airspace and that's that's the key because if caltran now says well you know then this is all for naught the true innovation is in the use of the airspace and and the whole point is to be as conventional as possible with the implementation of that idea charlie i appreciate your new solution that you proposed for housing development over freeway so i appreciate your creativity and you know most people wait around to be told uh to come up with an idea so i i really appreciate your initiative in calling kind of following through on forming an unsolicited proposal for a really creative new housing development solution. So thank you. I really appreciate it, Charlie. You've been incredibly helpful and supportive of this. Take care.